morning, everybody. Good morning. I heard somebody say earlier that uh, we have quite a crowd today. Uh, we have been averaging nine for the past two or three Sundays, and we have nine out today, so we're glad to have each one of you here. Uh, there are several things I want to say prior to uh, our uh, message this morning. First of all, last Sunday morning, Pat uh, McMillan passed out a little paragraph that had 30 books of the Bible in it. How many of you took one of those home? Raise your hand. Just, I took one home too. Uh, how many did you find? I, okay, I got them all. And I made a list of the books of the Bible as they appear in the paragraph. And Ruth has that list back there. So if you want a copy of that list uh, as they appeared in that particular paragraph, just pick one up for Ruth. <laughs> I, uh, but there's one trick in there uh, where it says and, uh, only a minister. Minister is another name for Ecclesiastes. So there, uh, if you look at some of the Bibles underneath the Ecclesiastes, will have the preacher, and I have seen some say the minister. So it's a, it's a secondary name so for Ecclesiastes. So there's that one trick in there. So uh, I, I thought I would pat, made a list of them and pat, I run them off, and you can have one if you wish. Second thing I want to say, we have several people that are having birthdays this month that I think are important people. Uh, first of all, we mentioned all these senators. I don't think my microphone's on. Ellery Sanders, uh, she's 95 today, and I noticed that in the bulletin that Bernice's name is listed for the 20th, which is a Sunday. And uh, I, I, why don't we, uh, if you want to, just send a birthday card to Eloise, and send a birthday card to, not the same card, but send a birthday card to uh, Bernice, and uh, uh, just let them know that we're thinking about them and praying for them. The Book of Acts, how interesting. Known by several other names. Uh, the Acts of the Apostles, which I think of this number. Also, some people call it the Acts of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit was God in strength and that empowering the uh, apostles to do what they were doing. Uh, it's a book of history. Uh, beginning with the beginning of the church on the day of Pentecost and going all the way through the Paul's uh, first imprisonment in Rome. Uh, it's a book which uh, talks about some of the important things of uh, our, uh, our, our church. Uh, in other words, it, it shows the actual messages that were preached by the apostles. It, it demonstrates how a person becomes a Christian. And by the way, it's the only book in the Bible that will give a precedence by which a person is to be saved. Because all the other books in the Bible were written to God's people, people that were already uh, there, but this shows how people came to know the Lord and became to become a Christian. Uh, uh, it primarily deals with the works of Paul and Peter, or Peter and Paul. Although others are mentioned, we find that Stephen is mentioned as a martyr. Uh, James is mentioned as the first disciple after the church began to um, give his life for, for Christ. He was uh, martyred uh, by Herod. Uh, and we find there's others in there. We find that James is mentioned. Uh, we find that, uh, uh, I have a, a comment here, and John is mentioned. So uh, all these are, are, are here for our understanding. Uh, but it, because Luke was a companion of Paul, uh, the uh, church, uh, the, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable in this chair, I'm sorry. Uh, the uh, because Paul, and Luke was a companion of Paul, we find that a lot of the dealings of the missionary journeys of Paul are, are mentioned. Uh, interesting to note that uh, uh, the, the pronoun changes from they in, in the uh, third person uh, to the first person at various places, indicating that Luke was with the apostle Paul at this particular time. Uh, there are several things I think are important uh, for, for us as we look at this. In the very first chapter 
of the, uh, of the book, you, we do find that uh, there is an outline of the book. Uh, in the verses 1, 7 through 8, it says, And he said unto them, it is not, This is Jesus speaking, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. The book gives us the church first of all, the church in Jerusalem. Then it talks about the church in Judea. Then it talks about the church in Samaria. Then it talks about the church in the uttermost parts of the world through the, the work of Paul, the uh, missionary evangelist. Uh, and as you look at this uh, uh, commission, uh, it is very important that we understand a few things about it. Uh, I've, I've often asked what the difference is between the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost. Uh, people that are not familiar. They are exactly the same Greek word. Uh, that a lot of people don't know. It's exactly the same Greek word. Uh, the only difference is that when the translators translate the Bible, the King James Version, back in 1612, that the ghost was a positive thought and the spirit was a negative thought. So when they're talking about the Holy Spirit, they put use of ghost, which was positive. Down through the years, the evolution of language changed the two, so that we, when we speak of a ghost, we think of a, something that is scary, something that is negative. And now we think of the spirit as being something that is positive. And so as we, uh, we find that a lot of people refer to the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit, exactly the same person. Acts 15 deals with the apostolic convention. A lot of people feel that this is justification for having an organization over and above the church. Uh, I think we need to understand that this conference in Acts 15 was called to be able to settle issues that had crept into the church. Uh, uh, in other words, there, what about the Judaizers? As a person had to become a Jew before they become a Christian. Uh, and uh, circumcision was being practiced by some of the churches as being necessary. Uh, also, we can find other things being done. I want to point out that not one change in the basic doctrine of the church was changed by the Jerusalem Conference in Acts 15. All they did was explain the, uh, go through the issues and explain that they were not, these additions that they were being added to the church were not necessary. I'm going to go on Paul's missionary journeys are recorded in the first one, Acts 13, 1 through 14, 28. The second missionary journey was recorded in Acts 15, 36 through 18, 22. Uh, the third was recorded in 18, 23 through 21, 16. And his trip in Rome is uh, recorded in, uh, in 21, 17 through 28, 31. Uh, that trip to Rome was very exciting and very uh, interesting because of the fact that uh, shipwreck, the saving of the people through the shipwreck where not one person's life was lost because God promised Paul they would not be. Another interesting thought, baptism. Transliteration of the Greek word baptizo. It comes from the root word bapto which means immersion. It means plunge, dip, or immerse in the Greek language. Uh, interesting that all Greek churches will practice immersion because of the word baptism. Uh, the idea that sprinkling and pouring is being practiced today as baptism is wrong. The Greek word for, uh, for the uh, for sprinkling and pouring are cheo and rantitsa. And so we need to be careful with that, that we don't think that uh, sprinkling is being uh, a part of that. One, one thing I don't have in my notes is you want to look at it. The word, the uh, first chapter of the book of Acts deals with the idea of uh, the appointment of Matthias as a replacement for Judas in the original 12. I served the church one time where about 80% or more of the people there believed that Matthias was not a real apostle. And the reason for that, they may say, well, the Holy Spirit had not come yet. They were not directed by the Spirit. And that Paul was the 12th apostle. 
I, I disagree with that thought. And if you ever come across it, the, reject it immediately. Uh, the Bible says that Matthias was numbered with the twelve. He is indicated several times as being with the twelve. And we need to remember that what the Bible tells us we cannot change just because we want to put Paul there. In fact, if you want to number them, there were about 17 different people in the Bible that are identified as apostles of Jesus Christ. The biggest thought that we have here is that we need to remember that the book of Acts is the only book in the Bible that will outline the plan of salvation. Uh, I was asked one time, where can you find a command to be baptized and not anywhere else besides the book of Acts? You can't. All the other books, Romans to Jude, were written to Christian people who had already been baptized. No command was necessary. And then you look at some of the things that are there, I think it's important that we identify what did they teach in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, how a person needs to become a Christian. And I think we need to look at this. In Acts, uh, the second chapter, you have the day of Pentecost, where Peter stood up and preached the very first gospel sermon. As you read down, he goes through the prophecies identifying Jesus Christ as the Messiah. He comes to the point where, where he emphasizes the idea that, that they had crucified the Son of God. And when the Jews heard this, they cried out and said, what must we do? They were pricked in their hearts and they cried out, what must we do? And the answer that Peter gave was then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In the third chapter, you find Peter preaching another sermon. It was when Peter and John went into the gate called Beautiful. There was a lame man there that they reached out and helped him become uh, fully healed. And the red man ran, ran through the church, praising uh, through the temple, praising Christ. And in that particular sermon, in the 19th verse of the third chapter, uh, we find that Peter was saying, Repent ye therefore and be converted, and their sins might be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. A lot of people feel that Peter was preaching two different things. But you compare it. Both verses have the idea of repentance. Both verses have the idea of the removal of sin. Both verses have the idea of receiving the Holy Spirit. One says that you should receive the gift of the Spirit. The other says that days of repression shall come from the presence of the Lord. The only word that is basically different is that you be baptized and be converted. And in my opinion, they mean exactly the same thing. They would have to because all the other, three of the four are almost identical. And I think Peter was just using a different terminology in order to be able to resolve the idea that baptism is a conversion. And you're not really becoming a Christian until you are being born with Christ in Christian baptism. Interesting that this is something that is brought out in other conversions. There are ten different conversions of before a person becomes uh, uh, becoming, becoming a Christian. Ten different ones in all the book of Acts, and all ten are pretty well outlined. All ten emphasize the idea that a person has to hear the gospel. It's specifically mentioned. That's what the M means in the chart that you have before you. The M means that you are, it's mentioned that they heard the preaching of Paul. Emphasize the idea that this, and I'm going to emphasize this pretty strongly. Infants are not qualified to become a Christian for the simple reason they cannot hear and understand the gospel of Christ. In every occasion of conversion in the book of Acts, they heard the preaching. How shall they hear without preaching? And how shall they believe without hearing? Belief is mentioned four different times, and all the other times it's strongly implied. That's what the I mean. And we need to realize that we need to believe what we hear. Repentance is only mentioned twice and, uh, and implied once. 
Confessions only mentioned one time, and that's questionable. For the simple reason that a lot of manuscripts did not have that particular verse in it. Baptism is mentioned every time. Every time. Notice the percentage, 100% of the time, we're hearing, approximately 40% of the time if we're the mention, and 100% of the time if it's going to include the implied. 20% of the time repentance is mentioned, which is strongly mentioned by other churches. Only 10% of the time if we accept that particular verse. Baptism is 100% of the time if we believe in baptism. 100% of the time. If baptism was that important, if baptism was that important, then we need to realize that we have no right to change what the apostles are preaching. I, I have a book in my library, it's called the Encyclopedia of Religious Knowledge. Uh, and don't ask me to show it because I'm not even sure I can get to my library right now. But uh, that book, I looked up the word bab uh, baptism. And the point is that uh, one of the paragraphs there says something in this particular order. That uh, uh, people believe that the church has the right to change the mode of baptism, the sprinkling and pouring, through the direction of the Holy Spirit through this particular conference, or convention. I don't think they do. I think they do. No one, no one has the right to change what God has said. Not even Phil Faust. The book of Acts is interesting. It emphasizes the idea of commitment. As you see in the individuals of the disciples and the Christians of the early church, we see the idea of devotion, of dedication to God. You see the idea of sacrifice, even to the sacrifice of life, liberty. You see the idea of service being emphasized. You see the idea of love all the way through. One of the things I did not mention, and I question whether I should or not, then on Paul's third missionary journey, and when he went on his first, second missionary journey, he uh, was taken out uh, and told the churches to give up an offering. Jerusalem was having a, a, uh, a famine, and Christians there were starving to death. And they were going around, Paul said, I'm going to come back and I'll gather up this offering that you're going to take up for the saints in Jerusalem. So on his third missionary journey, he gathered up this offering. And he took it and gave it to the disciples to distribute it among the Christians so they could buy food or they could do whatever is necessary in order to sustain themselves during this famine. It is estimated, and I, I, I'm using modern day terms of some of the things I have read, it is estimated that when Paul was returning from his third missionary journey to go to Jerusalem, that he was taking back several million dollars in our terminology to the church in Jerusalem. The reason I say this, I think Christians need to be concerned about each other. I think the church emphasized this in the book of Acts. If there is a need of a brother or sister congregation, our brothers and sisters in Christ, we ought to respond to that need and to be able to show our love, our commitment, our devotion to God. And I think we as a congregation are very liberal, very uh, generous in our help of others. Book of Acts, I love reading it. I get excited every time I see some of the things that are being done. Paul's escape from Damascus. Paul's vision as his run went to the road to Damascus. It is a thrilling book. We need to follow it. The president follow the precedence that was set. We're going to bring our service to a close. If there's anyone here that needs to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, we invite you to come if you have a decision to make. We ask that you make it as we stand and sing just as I am.